Okay, here's a scary looking worksheet. It doesn't even have instructions. So our first challenge is to figure out what we're meant to be doing, and our second task then is to do it. Okay, so can we figure out what's going on here? So we've got this top part here. We've got four examples, I guess, what shows what we're meant to be doing, how we're thinking. Can we interpret matters right now? The first one has the word power, subscript five, the number 25, and the number two as the answer. So there's something about five and 25 and two that relate in some way, probably to do with powers. In fact, I can see right now, um, five squared is 25. Oh, the power of five that gives the answer 25 is two. Five to the two gives 25. Okay, I think that's, what, that's what's going on here. Let's keep going, see if that works. The power of three that gives the answer 27, well, three to the three does give 27. Three times three times three is 27. The power of 10 that gives the answer 100, 10 squared is 100. 10 to the second power, 10 to the two. The power of four that gives the answer four, well, four to the one is four. So I guess we know our exponent rules here. Okay, so as soon as we know our exponent rules, I think we can figure it out, and we can probably go and do the rest of these. There's a lot of them. All right. Okay, here goes. Let's try. The power of two that gives the answer eight. Uh, two times two times two. Two cubed gives the answer eight. The power of 10 that gives a thousand. 10 times 10 times 10. 10 to the power of three gives a thousand. 10 cubed. The power of four that gives the answer 16. That would just be four squared. Four to the power of two. The power of seven that gives the answer one seventh. Okay, exponent rules. That would be uh, the negative one. Seven to the negative one is the reciprocal. Anything to the negative one is the reciprocal. Seven to the negative one is one seventh. Uh, the power of two that gives the answer the square root of two. Okay, two to the half gives me the square root of two. All right, we know our exponent rules. Um, the power of four that gives the answer 64. Okay, don't have that one in my head. Um, right, four times four is 16, times another four is uh, 40 plus a 24, that's 64. Four cubed, four times four times four. Four to the power of three gives the answer 64. The power of 73 that gives the answer one. What power of 73 gives the answer one? Well, anything to the zero gives one. So 73 to the zero gives one. The power of 73 gives the answer one is zero. All right, great. The power of one that gives the answer five. One squared, one times one, that's one. One cubed, one times one times one, that's one. Uh, one to the seventh, one times one times one times one times one times one times one, that's one. I think every power of one is actually going to be one, not five. Hmm, I'll worry about that one. Put question marks there. What power of two gives the answer zero? Well, two squared is four, two cubed is eight. Two to the zero is one, that's not it. Two to the negative one is a half. Two to the negative two is a quarter. Two to the negative three is an eighth. I don't think I'm ever going to get to zero. Two, there is no power two that gives zero, I don't think. Hmm, that's a weird one as well. What power of two gives the answer negative four? Okay, I think all the powers of two are positive. So I think it's actually impossible. Two squared is four, two cubed is eight, two to the negative two is one quarter. Now, I don't think I'm ever gonna get a negative answer. That's weird. What power of negative two gives the answer negative four? Um, well, negative two times negative two is positive four. Oh, again, that one that one's making me really nervous. Another question mark. Okay, this worksheet's falling apart now. Uh, what power of zero gives the answer zero? I could do that one. Zero cubed is zero. Zero times zero times zero is zero. So the answer is three. At the same time, zero to the fifth power. Zero times zero times zero times zero times zero is also zero. So the answer is also five. The answer is also seven. The answer is also 92. I think it's got too many answers. That one's got me worried as well. Okay, okay, so that's the worksheet. That's the worksheet. Work out powers of these various base numbers to give certain answers. Great. But then the worksheet starts falling apart. All right. But the fact is, we've basically got it. We've figured out what these things are, and we can answer some basic questions, at least in some nice cases. And guess what? These are logarithms. We've just been doing logarithms. In fact, my advice is, cross out the word power and write log for logarithm instead. Log, log, log. Log. This is all the worksheet is. It's a worksheet on logarithms. Napier's logarithms. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Basically, logarithms are just powers. Just powers. Here it is. So I just cross them all out. You watch me do it like, I don't know, 12 times in a row. Write the word log. Hope it sticks in the word in your head. Log is just a power. When I say log base b of n, I'm asking for the power, power of b that gives 
the answer M. This worksheet is actually a worksheet on logarithms. We've been doing logarithms just by using our common sense right there. This is it. That's all a logarithm is. A logarithm is a power. And you know what? Napier didn't see that at the time. That's his, his colleagues, his contemporaries, did not see it at the time. And to be fair, Powell's exponents were very, very confusing. We've seen that very subtle things. And it took mathematicians a good hundred years to actually make proper sense of powers. And it wasn't until the mid 1700s that people realized, oh my goodness, Napier's logarithms are just powers. In fact, I'm going to advise you to do the reverse thing. But if you see the word log or abbreviation log in a textbook or in a problem or something, in your mind at the very least, cross it out and write the word power. Because log base b of n is the power, the power of b that gives the answer n. It's just powers. All right, but as we saw in the course on exponents, exponents are deeply subtle. We start getting into exponents of zero and, and answers during the zero, things are troublesome. We start dealing with negative powers and negative numbers here. Uh, things are troublesome. Working with negative numbers and exponents is really kind of troublesome. And working with the number one is also tricky. So people add a caveat. So they say, look, let's just avoid these really scary cases that really do take some real deep, subtle thinking to make sense of powers of zeros and negative ones and so forth. Let's avoid them. So let's assume that, assume that B is a positive number, N is a positive number, they're only ever working with positive numbers, and let's also avoid base of one. So people add this caveat to say, let's just avoid the scary cases, but in the world of positive numbers and avoiding powers of one, Here's a logarithm, it's just a power of a particular number giving a certain answer. That's it, that's it. So logarithms are just powers. People eventually realize that. And you know what? By the time, you know, 100 years later, the word logarithm stuck. And here we are another two, 300 years later again, and the word logarithm is still with us today. We keep using the word logarithm, which I guess is a good thing. We're honoring Napier by using his word. But logarithms are just powers. So just to be very clear, Whenever you see the word log, cross it out, either physically or in your mind, and write the word power instead, and everything will fall into place to you. And don't worry, we're going to avoid all the scary things. That's not going to be part of our considerations. People say, nope, avoid the scary cases, and logarithms are just powers.